I'm Liran Shapira, co-founder and CTO of Quixie. In 2009, we asked ourselves, how do we build the best search engine for apps? And I'm going to tell you some of the technology we invented in the last two and a half years to do that. The first thing we did was we realized we need to build a new type of model of our domain. Because we weren't doing regular content search, we weren't trying to match the text of a query with the text of some web page. We were trying to find apps that do what the user wants. So we couldn't go with the naive approach of taking the app's catalog text and dumping it in a black box that can give you document search. There were two problems with that. The first problem was it's the wrong type of search. We don't want to do a text content type search. We want to do a new type of search. And the second problem is that by doing a catalog search the naive way, we would only be seeing the tip of the iceberg because a single app catalog doesn't contain all the relevant information about what an app can do. Actually, if you want to know what an app can do, we realize there's so many places on the open web that can tell you a lot better than the official catalog. Maybe you have the developer's website. Maybe you have tweets on Twitter. Uh, you have news articles about what the, the company is up to. Uh, you have blogs and uh, random websites. So we realize we need to completely start from scratch and build a new model of this domain, which has never been done before. We had all this data that we wanted to collect in order to build our unique schema, our unique model of the functional web. And we had to find a way to, to give all this data some sort of taxonomy and structure, some ontology in our database. The naive way to do it with apps is to start with platforms as kind of the root of your taxonomy. And each platform would have a bunch of categories for apps. And then each category would have a bunch of apps. So the naive taxonomy goes platform, categories, apps. So Quixie's taxonomy we introduced apps as first order objects, meaning our database just has apps, and then the apps would have metadata. And the platforms would just be one type of metadata on the app. So the same app might be on a number of platforms, and the developer might develop it for more platforms as time goes on, but that's not what we thought was critical about the app. We kind of took an app-centric view of the world, and the reason we did that is because developers take an app-centric view of the world, and users take an app-centric view of the world. And our goal was to model things the way they are in real people's minds, not just things the way they are in naive extensions of existing search. If there was just a blog that mentioned an app and had maybe a positive sentiment or another type of uh, valuable uh, English content, we would try to integrate that data into our search engine as well. And that kind of ontology of apps with structured and unstructured metadata is a completely new approach. It's perfect for our domain of functional search and it's never been done before. From day one, we realized that we needed a new type of search because the kind of search result matches we wanted were different from the kind of things you get on a web search. We don't want to just match the text in your query to the text in an app. We actually want to find you apps that do what you want according to your query. So on a web search, it's, very, uh, it's a very one-to-one -one match between query and result. If you search for industrial revolution, you probably want a web page that on that web page, it actually says industrial revolution and it talks about the industrial revolution. But if you're searching for an app, you might have a query like, see where my friends are. And the app might never say that it sees where your friends are or it helps you see where your friends are. The app might be some kind of like a phone tracker app, like the title might be phone tracker. So we can't depend on a keyword match with words like see and friends. We actually have to build this understanding of what the app does and figure out that if you wanna see where your friends are, then a phone tracker app can help you do that. And we can't do that by doing a keyword search and trying to match the query directly to the result text, we actually have to kind of go to this metadata layer and build an understanding of what the app does. And once we have that understanding, the kind of search results you get are completely different. The ranking is different from what you'd get from a keyword content search. And so we call this new type of search functional search. The technology behind functional search is machine learning. It's a really good match for what we're trying to do because the way Quixie works is we have all this metadata about apps. We have all these different signals from all kinds of sources. Remember, tweets, review sites, blogs, APIs, structured metadata. And a human, uh, a human engineer is never going to understand the exact relationship between 100 signals of, of quality and a target variable, which is how well does the app do what you want. That's too much for any human to discover the correlation between data and search result relevance. It's too much data. It's not like a one-dimensional, simple correlation. It's a very complex relationship uh, that can only be captured by something like a boosted decision tree or uh, a support vector machine or some machine learned model. And so we spent a lot of time 
tweaking a, a customized machine learning approach so that we can take really obscure signals like the increase in page views of a developer's website uh, in the last week and, and figure out what that means uh, integrated with all the other signals. What does that mean about whether the app is relevant to a user's query? Uh, you know, in order to do that, the only way to do that is to have a machine learner that's very flexible and can integrate any type of information. So that's why we went with a machine learning approach to implement functional search, and it's worked incredibly well for us. We learned some lessons from Google's PageRank. Everybody knows that PageRank was a really big innovation, and uh, it changed the way search worked on the web. Um, that's not an insight that you can just directly apply to the functional web space. You can't do PageRank directly, but you can generalize the actual insight behind PageRank. PageRank is a model of the web that starts by taking a web page, which is a block of HTML text, and it picks out a certain structure within that web page. That structure is the hyperlinks in it. So when a, uh, when a Google crawler sees uh, an anchor tag on a web page, uh, it models that not as just a block of HTML text. It builds a model of that anchor tag, uh, kind of a graph model, where the anchor tag is a node, or the web page is a node, and the hyperlinks are edges in this big graph. And then page rank is what you compute once you have that big graph. The key insight there is that you take a piece of unstructured data and you find its underlying structure. The way you do that for the functional web is not directly analogous, which is why we think that other companies didn't do it. But we saw that when you look at an app catalog entry, um, that's only one node in the apps section of the functional web. And you might have other nodes for that same app. So you might have other catalogs that also talk about that same app. And you have this kind of uh, spindle structure where you have this hidden node that we just call the app in the middle. And then all the different catalog nodes are kind of circling around it. And when a blog post talks about the app, there is a hidden structural relationship between the app and that blog post. It's kind of obvious if you're a human. Like in your human brain, you have the concept of an app and you know that you're reading about the app and you know that all these different things you do, uh, all this different content you see online is related to the app. But it took some innovative thinking to build a schema with apps as first order objects that captures that underlying structure. So we get a lot of mileage out of going into a domain where other search engines just see text. They don't see structure and we see underlying structure and that is our attempt to apply the lessons of PageRank. When we founded Quixie in 2009, we knew there was this problem of connecting users to apps, of letting users do what they want using their devices. And we didn't know how to solve the problem. We just knew there was a problem. And that mentality of starting a company around a problem, not around a solution, is what let us see the domain better than anybody else. That's what let us invent apps as first order objects and invent the concept of functional search and use the right approach for functional search. And we're gonna keep having this mentality of focusing on the problem and developing new solutions around the problem and observing how our domain evolves. The functional web might evolve in a lot of different ways. HTML5 might really change the game. It might make platforms less significant or maybe new platforms will take over and platforms will be really significant. We can't say for sure, but Quixie is always going to be there modeling the domain however it evolves. If we keep modeling the domain, we're always going to be able to connect users to apps and empower them to do what they want with their devices.